we're in double digits now. Episode mm -hmm. 10. Is this double digits? Double digits, rolling along. Nice. And kind of one of the thoughts that I've had recently is, I don't think every one of these is going to be interesting to everyone. No. And I don't think we need it to be that way. So this, you know, today's podcast, we're going to talk about recovery. And uh, the only person that would want to listen to this is somebody who's interested in getting better. <laughs> <laughs> so, so everybody be interested, but but, um, but talking about recovery, talking about what it means to to work out, what you're doing to yourself. I want you to kind of go over your your graph. Um, you know, talking about you know valleys and troughs there, mm -hmm. uh, or mountains, mountains and valleys, if you will. And yes. then um, you know maybe some tips that we have for for improving um, improving recovery, which improves training. Which at the end of the day, our goal here is to improve health. Yes. And I think if you're improving your recovery everything else will move in the right direction. So mm -hmm. I'd love for you to start off and talk about uh, you know, the, the peaks, peaks and the valleys. Yeah, absolutely. Of what training and looks like. I'll grab that. Too. For oh. those of you watching, you can uh, I'm do a little whiteboard demonstration here. Whiteboard but if you're, demonstration. If you're just listening, we're going to talk you through it so clearly that if you'll you, be able to visualize If you it. can't sit in an Indian style very well, grab a yoga block and sit sure. like it so then you can sit up straight instead of just what, like bleh, all the time. Forward. All right, cool. So uh, super compensation model, right? Uh, kind of wanted to like I was saying earlier, like I want to talk about how it relates to both fitness and work because I think we put it in the like we always put in the aspect of recovery as in it should be for fitness, but we don't realize that like our brain is working too. So most people do like three hours of fitness a week. Good, like, like high achieving people. Yes, but there's fit fitness for your brain too. Like so, but anyways, so this is the line that you start with, right? So. This is a horizontal line. line. We'll call that our baseline. Baseline, right? So everybody starts here. So when you go to work out, you're intentionally so, making your what? Oh, go, ahead, go ahead. I was going to say working out. You're 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 finishing with less than what you started. Yes. Working in would be having more in your system than oh, when you started. Yeah, you're putting effort out. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, yeah. I like that. Uh, and so then when you work out, you're actually dipping down right here. You're fatiguing yourself, right? So you are intentionally making yourself weaker. Mm -hmm. And a great example of this is 18.4. Uh, right? Deadlifts. Deadlifts, mm -hmm. right? So the deadlifts and handstand push-ups. Yep. If after that workout you could do more handstand <laughs> push-ups than when you started, you worked in. in. <laughs> you worked in. Impossible to do. Not going to happen, right? So um, you are working out, so you are getting weaker, right? Can I ask a question? Yes. How do I get back up to where I started? Oh, we're about to go there. Okay. <laughs> Good. Now, through recovery, rest, uh, nutrition, mm. sleep. Um, decreasing stress. Decreasing stress. Uh, getting off your phone, yes. Um, ice, all this brings you back above your baseline. Could it could could potentially? This is we're now, painting the best case scenario. Say you did eighteen point four on, uh, just say for hypothetical reasons, Friday, mm -hmm. right? And then you tried to repeat it <laughs> on, uh, we'll even say Monday, Monday, two days later, two days later, yeah. right? I feel pretty good. Yes, so maybe the two days later on your shoulders, shoulders tend to take 48 hours to recover. Um, say you're right here, right? Are you going to perform at you're this? You're a, a notch below the flat line, yeah. so you're not back up to your baseline. So yet. are you even going to perform at your baseline? No. No, what did you experience? I was far below my baseline. <laughs> yeah, so the first time yeah. that we both did it, we both got into the deadlifts of the 315. The second time that we both did it, we both didn't even finish Diane. Right. Yeah. So we were below this baseline. Didn't even yeah. give ourselves. And then, a and then, what happens after that? So now, you've you've worked out. You've started here because you haven't recovered. So we're below our baseline. So now you have to dip down again. So now you've dipped down once more, right? Mm -hmm. So now you're even lower than your low. Yeah. Now it's going to take double the amount of recovery to even reach your baseline. Right. So that's not what you're trying to do. So I'd almost look from a financial standpoint. I'd look at this as like compound interest. Mm -hmm. Negatively, so this is like credit card debt. Yes, like yes. you're you're making minimum payments on your credit card, and your balance is growing. Yes, it's and, good. and so so like say Monday you come in, you hit it really hard, you feel really good. Yeah, you're gonna take a hit, you're gonna drop down below your baseline. Well, you come back Tuesday, and you're still below your baseline when you start. So now your bottom is gonna be lower than what it was on Tuesday morning on Wednesday. Oh, absolutely. And then you're going to need three or four days over the course of the weekend to get back up just to your baseline. Absolutely. Yeah, just up to the, just up to the baseline again. Yep. Now, if you recover properly, now this does not mean all the time not working out. 
No. Not at all. What this, there's a lot of factors that play into recovery. There's nutrition. Sleep is vital, right? Mm -hmm. We talked about that a little bit last week, right? Yeah. Yeah. We need Sleep. to talk about it every week. Yeah. Sleep is vital to recovery. If you did the same exact work, if you ran on Monday, ran on Tuesday, ran on Thursday, that you'd just yeah. start going down more, right? Now, once you get above, now, all right, so we, we recovered, we ate well, we're feeling good, we do a different workout. Now, you intentionally drop yourself down, still above the baseline, right? Now you recover again, and the idea is that you can continually go up and down until you continually rise. You're moving your baseline up, and I think that's what people, so, so what we're saying about, about training is save something for tomorrow. Yes. Instead of, instead of beating yourself up and not being able to recover, come in, do a little bit. We always tell people do, do a little bit a lot, or yes. very often. Very often, yes. Come in, do a little bit so that you can recover, because what we're not talking about here, yeah, we're talking about the gym a lot, but we're not talking about um, life. So, so the rest of your day. So yes. you do, it, it is, so say you have a stressful job and you're there eight to 10 hours a day, like that's taking a bunch out of your tank aside from your workout. So, Absolutely. so you know, this is your baseline in life and this could even be a day, you know, a, a day where you take a big dip might not even be a training day. Correct. It could just be a stressful day. You had a bunch of meetings and Absolutely. things didn't go your way. But so, say you want to come in and crush it every day. Like, say you want to go like as hard as you can possibly go. Do we need right? This? No, we don't need yeah. anymore. Um, that's all and well. You have to recover as like go as hard in your recovery as you do in your workout. Like, right. it should be like a two to one ratio your recovery right. to your workout. Right. So if you like come in, you're like I'm PR in like Fran today. Yeah. Um, then you better PR your recovery. Like I'm gonna take a nap. I'm gonna do some foam rolling. Right. I'm gonna do. Some I'm gonna go outside for a walk at lunch for 30 minutes with my shoes off. Or yeah, get some sunshine. <laughs> get some shoes off, sunshine. Uh, I'm gonna eat really clean. Yeah. I might even, you know, that, you know, even do some fasting. Yeah. Take a nap, all that fun stuff, and then okay, then the next day, then you can go hard again. Right. But if you come in, I'm PR and Fran. Okay, then I leave, sit in my car, I go sit at work. I'm stressed out all day because of work's been crushing me. Right. My brain, I work you know, nine to five for the rest of the day. I don't give my brain any time to recover. Then I go home having to deal with kids, yeah, kids family, right. getting dinner ready, whatever it may be. You don't get to bed until 10 o'clock and then you gotta wake up and restart the process over. You just can, I mean, you You're PR'd your, your Fran and yeah. then you PR'd your work day. Yeah. <laughs> Next thing you know, right. you crushed your face and then you can't go any farther. Right. right. So um, You can for a while. You can yeah. for a while and until, then, you until, can't. until you burn out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, if you guys want to look up this, what this model is, so I did not create this by any means, what it is is a supercompensation model, mm -hmm. right? So there's a few different models. Uh, this one, if you look up supercompensation, it'll show you basically this graph if you Google it, and it'll give you a little bit more detail on it as well. But um, that's what it is. But the thing is, a lot of times we play this as it only relates to fitness, and I think that's. I, I think we're missing a step there. Like you got to take everything into consideration. Everything into consideration. Like, yeah. this is super compensation model when it comes to your work environment, yeah. right? And sometimes people, or maybe, I mean, we wonder why we're not getting any more be like better ideas or mm -hmm. going further or like, man, I feel like I'm stuck in a rut. You're not taking time to, to pull your head out of the water. When was the last time you stepped away from work mm -hmm. and took a, I like how you put it, the health day? Yeah, take a health day. <laughs> yeah. We've got an opportunity for you on May third and fourth. Take a you know do the twenty twenty experience. Take take a, a step away. Take a break, and uh, and take a deep breath. You know it's it's politically correct to take a sick day. Mm -hmm. Every, you know, oh, you got the flu. Oh, okay, get better soon. Yeah. How about like I'm just you, you are know, sick. Maybe I'm like uh, below my baseline. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe I just need some time to recharge. And then the other thing I was thinking about is you could take this model into to your relationship. Oh yeah. And it's like are you are you recovering your relationship? You know, you might be able to go a week without talking to your spouse at length about any important topic, but you're beating you're beating yourself down. Yeah. You need that date night, or you need that you mm -hmm. know hour of no phones, no TVs. Let's just like let's just talk for a little bit. Debbie's gonna you put know? this on repeat right here. Yeah, probably. Yeah, <laughs> and I, I, we all need to hear it because we all we all get in and we all get busy and. Um, you know, so you could apply this to your training, you could apply this to your recovery, you could apply this to relationships, you could apply this to work. Yeah. I, I think it's a really constructive model for people to work on. But you know, that segues into, so what, do, what are your, you know, 
how do I, so we, we briefly covered, okay, nutrition. We briefly covered, you know, getting sleep, but, but how do you improve your recovery? I mean, I, I mean, I try and get, I mean, it's pretty near impossible right now, but sleep, sleep is huge. Yeah. Sleep is, is like number one. If you're Why? not getting, because that's when your body recovers. That's when your body is allowed to, I mean, you produce growth hormone in your sleep, your body, your brain shuts off or recovers that's in the, sleep. So in REM process. sleep, their body is like processing everything. I, I love that analogy of a, a of a computer, and this has really helped me kind of think about think about my sleep, and and I see why I don't get REM sleep, but I get a lot of I get a lot of deep sleep, which mm-hmm. is like restorative for my body. So REM sleep is so like you go through your day, million miles an hour. And when you go down, when you go to sleep, your body has a spinning hard drive. So this is back when there's still some hard drive. What is, what is that again? Oh, yeah. Spinning? So, yeah. so the hard drive spinning around. Or, or, so this yeah. is your this is your processor, uh, the, your RAM, your random access memory. It's moving around, moving around, moving around. When you go to sleep, it can take all that data and put it into permanent storage. Uh, yeah. Okay. Because like what you like if you've ever like crammed before a test, you cram, cram, cram. It's all it's all accessible. Mm-hmm. You take the test. Where does it all go? Gone. Gone. It did not get processed. You <laughs> no. pulled an all-nighter, you did whatever you have to do to get the grades, to get the presentation, to you yeah. know, whatever you have. Everybody's, everybody's had that, but phew, that Gone. goes away because you're not getting that, that storage. You're not, you're not putting it into the hard drive. So mm-hmm. for, for me, that's, I mean, that's a huge, huge part of it, of, of getting good sleep, of like recovering your brain so that you're, yeah, we want our bodies to feel good in the morning, and that's, you know, sleep's a huge part of that, but you also want to be able to think clearly to be oh, sure. Yeah. Okay. So, so sleep. Sleep. So go to sleep uh, more. Sleep more. Sleep. Take naps if you can. Like, if you have a, we need it. I wish we had siesta. Is it called a siesta? A siesta. Yeah. I wish the United States yeah. honored siesta time. If there's any senators or uh, <laughs> representatives listening to this, we need a siesta. It would make everybody's life more productive. Like it, even in just twenty minutes. Even just twenty minutes. Like I would love to actually go to a school, like a high school or something and have them have a nap time. Like, yeah. it's so important for little kids to take nap time so their bodies can, brains can recover and their... What about us? Why not a high schooler? Why can't we have a high schooler have a nap time on purpose? Mm-hmm. Like, I would love to see a test on that and see if, you know, grades would get higher and stuff. But so, we got but, sleep. But, okay, but so one thing I said, so say you're in an office, you know, you're in an office, you're like, dude, I, I don't work at Google, I can't take, take a nap. nap. I wonder why Google takes naps. Yeah, think day. about that. Hmm. Does that work for him? I wonder. So, but what about at your desk? You just you just stop and be still for five minutes without your phone. So we like, just got to remove that. <laughs> yeah, phone yeah. is gone. Just try and be still for five minutes. Yeah, still. you ever try that. It's yeah, close insane. your eyes. Yeah, take some deep breaths. Yeah, and that that can be you know you might call that meditation or whatever, but that's just giving your body and your mind a chance to just kind of chill out yeah. uh, versus versus staying on the hamster wheel. Yeah, or they um, have the um, what's the. Uh, the one timer where it's like a, an interval timer for work. So you do... I just use my timer on my... I use timer on Google. I type in 15 minute timer. Yeah. Go. But if you go 100% effort... So think of work like a workout. Yeah. If you did... And we'll just use Fran because it's the name of thrusters and pull-ups. Everybody, a lot of people know that what that is. Or let's say a one rep max back squat. Um, say if you just continually did one rep max back squats, are you going to be very successful over and over throughout the entire day? No. Eventually, you're going to run out. So, but say the Bulgarian weightlifting system did this, they would max out seven to ten times a day. However, they're taking big breaks in between. Big rest, yeah. Big breaks in between. Mm-hmm. Uh, same rules apply with work. Say you go 100% effort for 15 minutes at one subject. Right. That one subject is probably going to be a lot better than if you were doing a million other yeah. things for 45 minutes because you're not really focusing on the one thing that you're, you're doing. You're finishing one thing you're at a time. Finishing. You're trying to take a phone call. You're answering an email, working on a project. Yeah. So take 15 minutes and then take a five-minute hiatus to just sit there, like you said, and just mm-hmm. breathe. Mm-hmm. So then you, this is a mini super compensation model for your day. Yeah, mini recovery. Mini recovery. Yeah. So you... Go crazy hard for 15 minutes. Okay, take five minute recovery. Your brain's back online again. Go to a different subject. Okay, now you can go hard again. Yep. Five minute recovery, and have try that for a model of the day, and yeah. see if you're not more productive. I, I noticed that I had a day. Um, it's probably like every other day. I'll have I'll have a good way. I'll have a bad day. Some days I just get in and I just start burning. <laughs> I get in the groove and then I just like 
just auger myself in all, all day long. Um, the days that I'm most productive are the days where I have the gaps. Mm -hmm. It's like 30 minutes. I have 30 minutes to get this done. Na 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 na. Boom boom boom. And then get up, smell the roses a little bit, and then and then move on to the next thing. Well, and probably I, I'm sure we've all had this happen. At the end of the day, you get home and you're like mentally just Blown. drained. Yeah. Your brain takes 20 percent like plus. Yeah. Of your daily energy yep. expenditure. <laughs> yeah. So, so that that's a great great point and lead into longer fast. So, you know, if you're if you're eating three meals a day, so you got forty percent of the energy going to your digestive system, you got twenty to twenty five percent going to your brain. Um, if you are eating all day long, you're you're not getting as much uh, neural action as as you want. So, I think another way, at least for me, that's really helped my recovery is is lengthening my window. Mm -hmm. And I still eat the same amount in a, in a given day, you know, if you're talking about macros or, you know, protein, carbs, and fats, but I'll, I'll, I'll put them tighter together. So, yeah. you know, like yesterday I ate, um, I ate during like a four hour window. Yeah. And, you know, uh, some, some days it'll be a six hour window, some days it's a two hour window. Some days, you know, I might have, so that day I was talking about where I had a, like a really long day, like, kind of stressful, I skipped dinner that night mm -hmm. and got like blockbuster sleep because <laughs> yeah. I skipped dinner, but that I had breakfast the next morning. So like you can use, you can use your meal and meal timing as a way to, to enhance recovery as well because you're t putting less stress on your digestive system. Yeah. What do you crave though when you're tired and burned out? Carbohydrates. Yeah. I mean, so that's, so that, that's a hard, that's a hard thing. One, one, you should acknowledge it and know it so that you have like a little defense against it. Mm -hmm. But you know, try and at least, you know, be aware of that because, man, I go to the cupboard, <laughs> try and find what's in there. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, yeah, and so there's, like, with that, it's not like there's any, you don't necessarily have a strict, like, well, I didn't eat, that. well, I can't eat until this, like, base it off of feel. Base it off of where you, yeah, where yeah, you are. Yeah, and, like, so say you didn't crush work that day. Mm -hmm. That doesn't give you an excuse. I got to recover hard from work. I didn't do any work today, but I need to recover hard from today. I'm gonna. I'm I would argue that you should still recover hard. Do you know anybody who lives above their baseline? No, no, I don't. Right. So you should always recover. Yeah. I mean, I I would love to, but yeah. But I mean, I'd say equal it to the amount. So that's what's fun about the Whoop is it gives you your strain level for the day or whatever, mm -hmm. and then base your recovery off of that if you have a right. Whoop or something. Right. But I, I mean, recover. Two to one ratio of what you are what you are working both mentally and physically, yeah. but recovery is very important. Okay, other other tips. So so you extend your eating window. How about like maybe give up sugar, give up alcohol. What are some other hindrances to recovery? It's, I mean, it comes down to refined carbohydrates. Yes, refined carbohydrates. Anything that causes inflammation. Yes. Any any types of oil, um, uh, like polyunsaturated oils, corn oil, soy oil. Any, if it's Canola. if it's made in a plant, don't eat it. If it's a plant, eat it. If, if it's it made in a plant, don't eat if it. If it came out of the ground or it had a face, yeah. Yeah, or it was a lot. Yeah, something that was alive. Go ahead and eat it. I mean, it, it last night we had pizza and that was great. Yeah, it was super enjoyable. Yep. Um, so there's there's always a time and a place for it, but there's a time and a place. There's a time and a place for it. Yeah, yeah. but like a majority of your time should consist of real food. Mm -hmm. uh, veggies, meat, veggies, nuts and seeds, some fruit, a little starch, and no sugar, mm -hmm. right? Now, one thing I think people don't realize is uh, all carbohydrates are sugars. And when, they, when they're broken down. When they're right? broken down in your body, right? right. Uh, however, when you put fiber into it and you put resistant starch into it, then it, it breaks down differently than, say, yes. a Snickers bar or right. a can of Coca-Cola, which no one should ever have, ever. Mm -hmm. um, ever. Not even diet, not even zero sugar. Cola, just stay away from it. Stay away. Yeah, we are not. Oh, we forgot to mention today's sponsors. We are not sponsored by Coca Cola, no, or Pepsi, Pepsi Coke today. Yeah, or, or okay. any soda beverage. That's okay. Yeah, um, and then but like vegetable or juice. Juice. What about juice? Juice has more sugar than a can of Coca Cola. Right. Yeah, and like, we think we can give it to our kids well, and then uh, no, they it's turn worse into than little, Coke. I know. Worse yeah, look Coke. look at the sugar content on that, and then Ooh, how about a yogurt? Yeah, look the at Yoplait the Yoplait yogurt mm. has more sugar. I think 23 grams of, carb of sugar in a Yoplait yogurt, and a can of Coke has like 22 or 24. I, I thought it was more like 32. 30. I think it's 30 something. All I know is they're pretty dang close. Root beer is worse than Coke. I remember that. Really? Because I like root beer, and I was like, oh, this is healthy. It's from roots. <laughs> <laughs> 
roots with sugar. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, it's, it, it plays with What are some other things that, so yeah, when you talk about recovery, you're trying to manage inflammation, you're trying to dec decrease inflammation. We were, so you're cutting out, you're cutting out sugar or eliminate it most of the time. Mm -hmm. It makes you, when you get off sugar, or you try it, if you take our word for it, you know, you'll be loving yourself. But if you, t if you go off sugar for a month, you will feel different. Yeah. Your knees will feel different. Your elbows will feel different. Your back will feel different when you wake up in the morning. Absolutely. Probably have a different attitude on life. Um, but then the other one is, is, the, is the booze. Yes. That's a hard one. It really is. That's uh, so how long have we, we did the dry December in the yeah. gym and then we did dry January. Or what was it called? Designated December? Designated December yep. and then Desi dry January. Yeah. Um, and have you, you haven't had any alcohol since. I don't think so. I, yeah, no, I know I haven't had I haven't. any alcohol. No, no, I have no. not. No, and I, for me, it's almost the fact of like, every once in a while I'll crave a, a glass of red wine or something like mm -hmm. that, but I'm not willing to have that because I know how it's going to make me feel in the morning. Yeah, so I think it's a paradigm shift between like having the glass or two or four to feel really good, and you're trading that for just feeling really good all the time. So it, yeah. it takes it takes like 30 days to, to, to flip. Yeah. So otherwise I can completely relate. Well, I'm not gonna wait 30 days to see it on the other end. I'd rather just have a glass of wine now and, and enjoy it. Yeah. But once you get through, once you go through a long enough period of like either no sugar or you know, less carbs, or, once you get through the other side, you're like, wow, this feels really good. I, I don't want, like you're saying, I don't wanna give it up. Yeah, not like, it's yeah. Like it's like drinking would be a sacrifice. Yeah, and there's, so sure, there's, uh, you could you could make the argument. Well, there's benefits for drinking red yeah, wine. Yeah, resveratol and the red there's wine. A, yeah, yeah, yeah. and you relax and it's fun. It's social. I'm like, I'm Absolutely. all about it. Absolutely, yeah, for sure. Uh, I want to feel good every single day versus good for. So so maybe let's go back to our, to our so, little chart. So yeah. say for example, you know if if you're below your baseline on a given day, and you then drink alcohol, you're you're digging yourself deeper. Yeah. What if you like. What if you've been on vacation and you've been sleeping really well and you've been getting sun and you've been relaxing? Now you're above your baseline. Yeah. Now your workout for that day might be, you know, a couple margaritas. Yeah. So now now you've kind of you've built in above the baseline, which mm -hmm. I think is important to to acknowledge. Like you're going to eat cookies, you're you're going to have pizza, but yeah. try and do it when you're when you're in a positive state or Correct. when you're above your normal baseline. Yeah. Cuz if you don't, it's it's affecting your recovery, which is going to affect, you know, well, and that's, I mean, that's even the whole fitness model with CrossFit. Mm -hmm. You come in, you do your on-ramp, you're right here. Right. Right. You work out really, really hard, really, really hard. Okay, we get up right here. And then, so if you're listening, I'm raising my hand up higher. Yes. He's like at a 45 degree <laughs> 45 angle. 45 degree angle. And then you go on vacation, you don't work out. You're back down just a little bit. Yeah. You're not at the baseline again. No. Right? But say you stay at baseline and then you go on a vacation and, and you're, you're constantly trying to get back up to baseline. You got to get above the baseline to, to make a new baseline, right. right? So every time you come back down, okay. And I think people forget that. I think they come in, man, I was just on, man, I feel like I'm out of breath. I don't think you remember what you looked like when you did your- Or own. how you squatted or like you couldn't do anything. Yeah, right. Yeah, I think they, we, take it, we take that for granted. It's right. like- You forget really quickly. When you first came in, you couldn't do anything. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. remember that mm -hmm. and like appreciate it. And then, okay, now I'm gonna, or I'm gonna go after it again. Right. And then go on that vacation but, and enjoy yourself. But your your progression isn't linear. No. You know, when you, when you first start off, it's it's not linear because you take hits. You get, you know, you get a sick kid. You get sick. You get, you know, things come up. You get a uh, say you have a nagging hamstring and you kind of take it easy for a couple weeks. Yeah. Um, but but you know. So, you know, we're talking about no sugar, we're talking about, you know, clean, cleaning up your diet, we're talking about going to sleep, yeah. um, getting to sleep earlier. Um, I mean, th those are all super, super important, um, but, you know, I think the biggest thing here is to acknowledge is like the consistency yes. of, of trying to stay at your baseline or above, mm -hmm. uh, getting ahead of yourself with your recovery versus trying to play catch up. Catch up yeah. doesn't work. No. You can't get caught up, so. Yeah, and there's um, sugar in catch up, by the way. <clears throat> Ketchup, yeah. <laughs> I would not. I would not touch that. No. Good, uh, well, you can get the agave stuff. 
Really? Which it's the same. It's the same crap. Same. But, yeah. But it's, there's no. Makes sugar. you feel better about it. Makes you feel better, and yeah. it says gluten free on it when yeah. most ketchups aren't are gluten free as it is. So. Cool. But if it uh, says it on the label, but it, it says you buy you're it. like, okay, it's, it's going to be good. Selling. Yeah. yeah. It's all marketing. <laughs> uh, so. What do what do and I like we talked about this earlier this week. What do and I think you looked up a bunch of people, but like what do really successful people do? Yeah, they take they take time. We were talking about uh, Bill Gates yesterday. He takes two weeks a year, which is I mean, okay, so so yeah, so you know, pumping up the 2020 experience is two days. Two days. Yeah, it's two days. Yeah. So he takes two weeks, which is great, and you could argue it's work. He's done it for like the last 30 years. He mm-hmm. takes two weeks off a year and just reads for 15 hours a day. It's insane. 15 hours. 15 hours a day. He doesn't see anybody except for a caretaker who brings him a couple meals a day. What? It's crazy. Yeah. So he just he just reads, reads, reads. Yeah. Total total reset, and then uh, doesn't have any communication with anybody. He sends outgoing mails, mm-hmm. but he doesn't get anything back. All right. And he does that for two weeks. So you know, I, I think going back to your initial point, you know, if, if we could get if we get people to eat clean, if we get people to sleep better. They're going to have tremendous results, and everything they do, and everything they touch in the gym is going to turn, you know, completely to gold. But, but you've got to take time for yourself. And Me, yes. Yeah, so, so I like there. There's this analogy with, or um, maybe it's a metaphor. I get get the two confused. This would be an analogy. The um, with meditation. If you can't afford to take 20 minutes a day to meditate, mm-hmm. you need to take 60. Yeah. So if you're that if you're that busy, or you can't find a window of 20 minutes to just sit, yes. don't, you don't have to get into crazy ohms and all this sort of stuff. But just find a place, sit down, lay down, close your eyes, open your eyes, stare at something for 20 minutes. If you can't afford to do that, you can't afford. Or if you can't afford to do 20 minutes, you need to be doing it for an hour because mm-hmm. you got to check yourself. Same thing goes for you know my I want a national like health day. Yeah. If if you can't afford to take a day off work or two days off work, to, you need to take it. <laughs> you yeah. we need to visit something, revisit yeah. what right. you're doing. Because yeah. because you're going to come back from from those two days off so much so much clearer. You're going to get a, a, you know at least well on us you're going to get one good night's sleep, yeah. which is what most people don't get in a month. Mm-hmm. Um, and and you're just going to have a chance to hit reset. You're going to take you're going to take your phone away, yeah, uh, for a couple days. And and I remember with the last one it was so. You see the look on people's faces when they hand you the phone. It's like they're giving their life away. Yeah, and you know, so maybe you know, maybe a takeaway from this is: can you can you set aside a couple hours a day where you're phoneless? Mm-hmm. Maybe you don't. I think t- that's like necessary. Yeah, you know, you need to check out a little bit. Absolutely. Can you get your kids to go phoneless for? Yeah. X oh, of time? so this book. Yeah, the one thing that they said in this book. So willpower doesn't work is the, the book. The book that I'm listening to right now. It's amazing. Kid, one of the things in the chapter that I'm listening to right now is talking about kids uh, learn two ways, uh, via observation mm-hmm. and mimicking, mm-hmm. okay? So who do they observe the most, and then what What's are they, they gonna mimic? They're gonna mimic you, right? So if you have a bad relationship with your phone, and you're wondering why your kid has a bad relationship with your phone, they're getting it from somewhere. They right. don't have anything other than what you show them. Right. Experiences. Experiences mm-hmm. to learn it from somewhere else. Right, so whatever they experience, if they experience you always on your phone, they're gonna wanna always be on a phone as well. Right, yeah. so it's absolutely necessary to like remove yourself from it so right. that you can spend, if you're giving yourself 100% attention, like I said, the 15 minutes of, to your work. Do the same de- thing with your relationships. Do the same thing with your relationships. Yeah. Devote 15 minutes of yeah. on, like I've put that in my little thing, like to do this. Spend intentional time yeah. with Weston. Right. Because they need that intentional time. Like, right. spend intentionally being with that person for yeah. that amount of time without your phone. I yep. mean, I think it's crucial. But back to like the the uh, the experience, and even if it's not the experience, even though it's going to be gauged towards rec- like bettering you, yeah. it's like if the most successful people in the world are taking time off to just think, they're not doing it just for kicks and giggles. Like, right. how do you think they got so successful? They right. probably took they stop and think. Yeah, because in order to get good ideas, in order to get new ideas, to develop new things, just like the RAM, your body needs to have space. If there's no space to produce anything, you can't produce anything. Anything new, right? Anything new, and so like in the experience, we're going to give you intentional time 
to go free your brain. Right. Journal it up. I mean, even if you do this at home, take two hours to sit there with a journal and just write your thoughts down. I think people confuse meditation like, like it doesn't have to be ohms, it doesn't have to be... It you have to have sit to, in a perfect, like a certain posture, like you no. lay down, sit up. Pick somewhere. What I've been doing in my car now is if I, I'll go somewhere early and I have something that, like, uh, something that I want to read, uh, the, I'm, my utmost for his highest. It's like a little yeah. devotional book. Yeah. I can just, I'll get there early, sit in my car where no one else is bothering me. I have my phone on silent somewhere else in the car mm -hmm. and I'll just sit and read that for a second. Mm -hmm. Okay, that Boom. just sets your day yeah. for whatever Checks it is. Out. Yeah, so it doesn't have to be anywhere specific, but like, go sit somewhere for yeah. a second. Yes, so, so it comes back to, yes, we want to recover your body. We yeah. want you to be eating, you know, eating cleaner. Um, you, know, you know, try and give up sugar for a period of time. Yep. It, well, I mean, we'll keep coming back to that topic over and over again because it works. Anybody who's done it, uh, you know, try and limit or uh, eliminate alcohol for a bit of time. See, see how you feel. Try and up your sleep game. Um, sneak in naps, find find quiet time to just chill out, and, and then sleep competitive. Yeah, sleep competitive exactly. And then you know that little phone that we all cling to and depend on is you know it's kind of our lifeline to the world, but it also uh, is an anchor. Mm -hmm. And I think we need you know need to set that free. So find find some time, a couple hours a day, even if it's a couple hours a week, to to set that thing free, and um, you know find find time to just be by yourself with a pen and a paper. And and yeah, let let things clear up. If you want to get better. If you want to get better. Yes. I mean, you don't have well, to. Go do it. Hopefully, you want. if you've made it to this point <laughs> of hearing us blabble along, um, you, you're you're motivated to get rolling. So, guys, thank you again for joining us. Uh, it was a pleasure talking about a very important topic that's taken way too lightly, and yeah. uh, and something that we'll keep we'll keep pounding home. So, here's to uh, increasing your baseline, and we'll see you guys in here soon.